Hey everybody, this is a quick video on how to maintain your Blazer ES1000 torch. So as everybody knows, these are great torches for everyday production or uh, maintenance type work. But their biggest downfall is that little piezo um, igniter goes bad, you know, after about a year. If you could get two years out of one, you're pretty lucky. Um, so here's what I do to, uh, you know, avoid having to spend, you know, 80 bucks to buy a new one. So you can contact Blazer and they will sell you an igniter for about $30, which is ridiculous. And you could send it back and they'll repair it, you know, for about $50, which is even more ridiculous. Uh, what I have found is in certain models of barbecue lighters, you could actually find a uh, direct replacement igniter, uh, but it's getting difficult to find the exact one. So recently I discovered that these Scripto electronic uh, piezo lighters are the exact duplicate and you could get them for 71 cents. So it's a really nice fix. So what you got to do is you get one of these Scriptos. Here's what the package looks like. And we got to tear it apart. So first thing we got to do is just uh, remove the housing here, you know, some way. It's pretty crude how I'm going to rip it apart here, but there it is. And there's, there's everything we need right there. Okay, so let's get all these pieces out of the way here. And you can see it's exactly what we need. This is the actual, um, uh, actual blazer igniter right here. The wire has been shortened, but this is the actual blazer igniter, and it's it's the exact thing that we need. So we could just tear this little, I don't know what that is, we could tear that off, we don't need that. Okay, so here's the next thing you need to do. I've been working on these torches for so long that, you know, you need to clean them every once in a while, so I actually made a key to take off the nozzle and the head assembly. Um, what you can do is you could get a little piece of hollow tubing and you could, you know, cut some little notches in it and stuff but I got fancy I took this to the mill and I I actually made this key and then I brazed the little T handle on it and it works great this is you know something I do weekly to keep my blazers you know firing up consistently so what you do if you've never taken one of these apart let's turn off the gas first just so we don't have any uh, mishaps and in the front of the torch there is two little slots that will key. You can see that there it keys with my two little uh, two little notches on the T-handle and you could just loosen that up and that will actually take off the, the torch head. So let me do that. Okay, so let everybody see it here, but I'm not sure how clear this is going to be, but that lines up inside there and it keys and you could take off that head otherwise you're not going to be able to get it apart and this is actually nice because you could uh they get loose every every once in a while and you could you could tighten them up and keep them keep them going a lot longer okay so next thing we're going to need to do is there are two screws right here on the side here's screw one you could see that and hopefully you could see that take that screw off put it somewhere safe then on the opposite side here there's another screw Take that one off as well. Next thing, we're going to go to the front of the torch, and there's a little, um, I'm not sure what it's called, it's just a little piece of, uh, of sheet metal, real thin sheet metal, that just kind of guides the, uh, the wire for the igniter. And you can see the igniter wire right there, and that just plugs into the, uh, to the nozzle right there, and it sparks in that little housing. Okay, so you got to kind of fold that forward a little bit to clear it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to push this forward. It's on a little rail. Push that forward and it just all comes off. And you can see there's the little that's the little gas hose. And that's what your torch looks like inside. Okay, so what we're going to need to do now is we pull off the trigger assembly. Then we're going to pull the igniter wire through here. And there's a little, uh, like a little lever that actually lifts the little needle for the gas. You could see that. 
So that'll that'll turn on our gas there. So we'll get that out of the way. And I've done this so many times, so I know exactly how to do it. But if you're not really familiar, take pictures, take diagrams, whatever you got to do. Otherwise, it could be a little tricky to get uh, get apart. Okay, so here's our igniter. Our igniter just sits down in that little hole there, in that little uh, that little box, and the wire just kind of sits in this little clip, and it just presses in there. So what you're going to need to do is get your your scripto lighter, piezo lighter igniter, and you're going to need to uh, kind of you know save some of this wire. You're going to have to cut it off and actually strip back some of the wire and you're going to solder the ends together. I'm not going to do that just because it takes forever. It's a little bit tricky. Um, but you're going to have to solder it using a soldering iron, not a torch. You'll melt everything if you try to use a torch, obviously. So solder the ends together. Then you're going to slip a little piece of shrink tubing over there and shrink a piece of shrink tubing over that solder joint just to insulate everything. Okay, so we'll just pretend this is our newly um, repaired igniter. All you do is you drop it back down there and then you push the wire into that little holder and it kind of snaps in there. You could use a, a tool or a nail, whatever. Okay, so next we are going to slip the little lever for the gas uh, needle I don't know, or pin, that might be a better better word for it and uh, it just sits in there and it kind of teeter totters so make sure it's doing that okay so now we're gonna stick the igniter wire through the lower hole the lower the smaller hole and you you have to kind of uh, bend this wire out of the way a little bit so that your gas hose when everything is put together will uh, will actually go back on there okay so now we're gonna drop the the trigger back in there and we will make sure everything's working if you if you're gonna use the trigger here make sure the gas is off because otherwise you might <laughs> catch something on fire okay we have good spark I don't know if you could see it, but we have good spark here. Eh, we'll forget it. You, can, you can't really see it. But we have good spark. Okay, so now we're going to get the little um, the gas lock. And the gas lock kind of sits in a little channel. So, you see, it just kind of goes under the, the lever here. I'll do that a few more times. I kind of push the, the, uh, the trigger. And I slide the little red button underneath it, and that kind of holds it in place. Okay, so next, this is the really tricky part. So we're gonna we're gonna slide this back on on that little rail, and then you're gonna have to take some needle nose pliers. And it's really tricky to see, but inside there you're gonna see that gas hose. And we're going to try to manipulate that gas hose back onto the little pin. It's really tricky, so bear with me here. Okay, it looks like I got lucky. Make sure it's on there really good. Oops. Okay, so now I'm going to put the two little side screws on first. And as we know, uh, band instrument repair technicians have to deal with tiny screws all the time so just make sure you are working over a table so we don't lose any of these because they're you know probably not too easy to replace uh, let me reset here ah sorry folks Okay, here's our first screw. Okay, there's our second screw. 
all good there. Let's make sure that our gas is off still and make sure that our, our lock is working. So we know how to work these. If the trigger's depressed, you could press the uh, or slide the, the lock and the lock position or the off position. So that's working and it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, so now what we have to do is there is a washer that goes underneath that little uh, kind of uh, sheet metal um, guide for the igniter wire that I was talking about. Sometimes they're plastic. I've seen plastic ones. I've seen a, a brass one. And I, I, for some reason, have this little uh, this little locking washer. So I think they kind of vary depending on the batch. Okay, so what we're going to do is you have to kind of manipulate this so that it sits flat. What I usually do is I kind of uh, put a screwdriver in the lower uh, lower hole and I just uh, pry up on it and then it'll make it sit flat. You want that to sit real flat otherwise when you're putting on the the nozzle um, those threads won't line up very good and you could strip it out so be careful there. Okay so we're almost done here. Okay so we're gonna line the igniter wire up with that hole there. 